Hello everybody, Dr. Yu here with the next video from the Calgary Guide video series, COPD Pathogenesis. Before we get started, please help us reach more viewers by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. Thanks and let's get started. So the pathogenesis of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease starts with both genetic susceptibility and environmental insults. Genetic susceptibility includes hereditary disorders such as alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. These genetic disorders reduce the lung's ability to prevent damage to the lung tissue. Simultaneously, environmental insults to the lungs occur, such as long-term smoking, pollution, or infection. These factors create free radicals in the lungs and also inactivate lung antiproteases. Overall, this combination of environmental and genetic factors cause lung inflammation, resulting in oxidative stress, inflammatory cytokines, and increased protease function. This chronic inflammation is systemic, but in terms of its effect on the lungs, it affects both the bronchial tree, which are the airways, and the lung parenchyma, which is the bulk of the lung tissue. First, continued repeated injury to the bronchial tree involves a variety of mechanisms, such as infiltration of inflammatory cells, especially neutrophils, into the airways, resulting in airway fibrosis and narrowing. Goblet cells lining the bronchial tree mucosa proliferate, increasing mucus production, and the death of the airway epithelial lining's ciliated cells create debris, which, combined with the mucus, becomes trapped in the airways, serving as anitis for infection. All of these factors result in a condition known as chronic bronchitis, which is defined in the COPD overview definitions video. Simultaneously, inflammation in the lungs result in increased proteolytic destruction of lung parenchyma. Basically, the proteins of the lung tissue are destroyed by proteases, enzymes that destroy protein. This breakdown of the lung tissue results in reduced airway elasticity, basically reducing the recoil ability of the lung, reducing the lung's ability to push air back out once the lungs have been actively inflated by expansion of the chest wall. This results in the trapping of air within the lungs. Simultaneously, there's less structural supports for airway patency, and that results in airway narrowing and collapse. And finally, destruction of lung tissue results in the permanent enlargement of the alveoli, resulting in hyperinflated lungs and bullae, which are easily ruptured air sacs on the lung surface. This collection of pathophysiological events collectively result in emphysema, which again is a type of COPD defined in the COPD definitions and overview flowchart. Taken together, chronic bronchitis and emphysema represent the two most common conditions under the umbrella of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And if you're interested in learning more about this topic, please see the relevant video about the clinical findings of COPD, both on physical examination and on history, as well as on laboratory investigations, as well as the flowchart and video about the complications of COPD. And that's all for the pathogenesis of COPD. If you learned something new, Please like this video so that YouTube can share it with other healthcare learners and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to keep up to date on when new Calgary Guide videos come out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.